This is a walrus bone. It's one of a few different bones that I have in my collection. Today we're going to take a closer look at them and examine some of the more strange bones that exist. All right, we're going to format this one kind of like a Q&A. So first question, what is a bone? Well, to be specific, it's a bone that sits inside uh, the of some mammals. The scientific name for it is a bacula. It sits right inside the shaft of the And if you look really closely at this bacula, this is from a coyote, you'll see that there's a ridge on the bottom. Do you see that ridge, that kind of like crevice? That's space for the urethra, so the, the tube that you pee out of. So it sits above the urethra. It's an extra skeletal bone, which means it's kind of just free floating in the body. It's not like kind of firmly connected to um, the rest of the skeletal system. Why are walrus bones so huge? Terrific question. It's because they have a large Some people might assume that baculum follow this formula, larger animal equals larger bacula. But let me show you something that might surprise you. All right, I'm holding two bacula here kind of evenly on the left side so you can compare how long they are. Check that out. This one on the bottom is a grizzly bear bacula and the one on the top is a sea otter bacula. Interesting, right? Grizzly bears, much bigger than sea otters, except sea otters have a longer bacula. So that idea that larger animal equals larger bacula uh, doesn't really hold up. Why do animals have bones? Terrific question. The current hypothesis is uh, mechanical support. It helps them maintain stiffness during copulation. And this idea kind of leads to another interesting hypothesis. The longer you take to copulate or like finish, so to speak, the longer their baculum will be. So if we go back to that grizzly bear and the sea otter, the sea otter's a little bit longer than the grizzly bear, so maybe the grizzly bear just finishes a little bit more quickly and the sea otter takes a little bit longer. The duration of copulation is longer for sea otters. What animals have bones? Well, I've got a couple different ones right here. So far, you've seen that walrus. We also have the sea otter, grizzly bear, I showed you that coyote real quick with kind of the dugout area. And here's my last one. It's from an animal called a ringtail, which is uh, like a kind of like a raccoonish type thing. Here's a list of mammals that do have baculum. Here's a list of mammals that do not. Humans do not. Some primates do, but not humans. What's the weirdest bone that exists? Well, this is a fun question. A lot of mine look pretty similar. You know, they're kind of straight but there are some little differences. Most notably, if we take that coyote one, you see that cutout, so it kind of rests on top of it like that. You'll see that at the end, it curves down ever so slightly. So coyote baculums curve down. But let's grab our sea otter. You can see it's kind of dug out on this side, which means it goes like this, and uh, they curve up. So sea otter baculums curve up. Interesting. <laughs> Walruses are big too, but really there are a lot more interesting ones out there. Check out this one. This is a raccoon baculum. They're in the shape of an S, which is very odd. But none of that compares to the baculum of ground squirrels. Check this out. These are ground squirrel bones. You can see at the end, it kind of flares out in a spoon type shape and has a bunch of teeth on them, which is super gnarly. The interesting thing about this though is female ground squirrels have complementary structures. Think about it like this. That ground squirrel baculum is kind of the shape of like maybe like a hand. The female ground squirrel is also shaped like a hand so they can kind of just like slip into each other, you know, like a glove. Weird. But if you want to see a really gnarly one, check out the baculum of rice rats. They're just like straight up like pitchforks or, or tridents. Absolutely crazy.